The Will You Grow Show goes live Sundays 9 to 10 a.m. Eastern. To receive notifications, click the subscribe button beneath this video or visit YouTube's Will You Grow channel to see more shows and videos. And now, here's Will You founder Angelique Meadow with this week's Will You Grow Show. Welcome to the Will You Grow Show. How are you? I'm Angelique and I'm here to ignite your inner courage to release yourself from limitations. I'm the founder of Will You and WillYouGrow.com, an inspirational multimedia company that provides personal growth and joy through education, conversations, and adventures. Like the one we're on today, we are out in nature here in East Tennessee. We are high above the Tennessee River, which is also called the Fort Loudon Lake. We're in the middle of a series of shows about personal growth through nature and how we can observe to learn things about ourselves. In today's show, we're coming to you from the air because we're going to be talking about a beautiful air animal, an air creature, an air spirit, something that can bring us... Oh, look, did you see that, <laughs> that lovely little fly who came behind us to say hello? Who is going to teach us this uh, animal spirit of the air. It's going to teach us some very special and important lessons. So to give you a little introduction to this animal spirit, I learn a lot through nature. Nature is my best friend. Nature teaches me things just by observing what it's doing and then reflecting back on myself and saying, how does that animal or that tree or that plant's behavior reflect upon me and what can I learn from that process, which is working oh so well in nature. So I have had something that I've been working on for a very long time. It's been a part of my business that I've been wanting to express and enjoy and see results from. I've been writing on a very special manuscript, which one day will come to you, but it's taken a very long time. And I was feeling a little discouraged about that. And so I had said my prayers, I had meditated, and I had gone out in nature to see what she had to teach me. When I did, I went to water my plants. And as I was watering my plants with the hose and just allowing those beautiful water droplets to uh, sparkle and shine and nourish all of my plants, I had a visitor. And by the way, right now, you can hear visitors. You hear them? More air spirits. Those are geese. You can hear a group of geese flying. Well. When I was watering my plants, as I was saying, I had a beautiful animal spirit come to visit me and teach me its lessons in regards to my lesson about feeling like there wasn't any progress. I'm going to show you some footage of that right now. This is not footage taken by me. This is some beautiful footage that um, our video Santa Neil is going to place into the video here now. The animal creature that I saw and came around my water hose was a hummingbird. Yes, the hummingbird. She came and danced around the water that was coming out of the outside of the faucet. She just allowed her little wings to be bathed in the little water droplets and splashes. And then she went up and sat in a tree and dusted herself off. So she took a little bath with me in the morning. So although that water was coming out quite uh, strongly, could have hurt a little hummingbird, could have taken a, a little thing like that right down to the ground, rather than seeing the frustration of not being able to get in the middle of the water, she just enjoyed being on the outskirts of the water. And she splashed around and got herself a bath. And that was a great message for me, because although I wasn't able and haven't been able yet to ride that strong wave of the middle of the spout of water to get the second manuscript that I've done published. I am able to dance in the joy of what is around me in nature and allow that to lighten up my soul, lighten up my perspective on life. Now that doesn't mean that I'm not respecting the fact that there's still a lot of work to do. So just because I'm taking time to enjoy something in nature or anywhere, that just provides me with balance. It's a balance. It doesn't have to be either work and stress 
or joy and fun stuff. It can be both. A little bit of both helps to make a balanced creative life. And that's one of the things that the hummingbird is here to teach us. There are lots of experts who can talk with us about the different metaphysical meanings of animals and plants. And one of my favorites is Ted Andrews. Ted Andrews wrote a book called Animal Speak, which is also available in the description box here today. And he is definitely an expert in metaphysics of animals, nature, plants, etc. He wrote a section in his book about the hummingbird, and I'd like to read that for you today. The hummingbird represents tireless joy and enjoying the nectar of life. Its cycle of power is in the daytime. The hummingbird may be the smallest of birds, but it is also the most fascinating. Anyone who has ever seen this tiny bird is filled with a sense of wonder and joy. Its name comes from the vibration of its wings as it flies or hovers. We've all heard of how good it is to whistle while we work, but humming is much more effective. It creates an internal massage, restoring health and balance. This the hummingbird reminds us to do. It reminds us to find joy in what we do and to sing it out loud. There are over 300 species of hummingbirds. This is very significant. In the Hebrew alphabet, the letter Shin is given the numerical value of 300. This has associations with fire and relationships, the past and the future. As we will see later, this is even reflected in the wing movement of the hummingbird. It has the ability to move its wings in a figure eight pattern, a symbol for infinity, and it links to the past and future and the laws of cause and effect. Hummingbirds have long bills and tongues that enable them to extract nectar from flowers. In fact, they could not live without flowers, and many flowers could not live without the pollination provided by the hummingbirds. Again, this reflects the mysteries of cause and effect that the hummingbird can teach us so that you can extract your own nectar from life. Hummingbirds have knowledge of how to use flowers for healing. This includes their fragrance, their color, their herbal qualities as well. They can teach you how to draw the life of essence from them and create your own medicines, as the hummingbird does every day. They can also teach you how to use flowers to heal and win hearts in love. The hummingbird is the most skillful flyer of all birds. It can hover in the air. It can fly backwards, forwards, and sideways. In fact, it cannot walk. It flies everywhere. It reminds us that if we truly enjoy what we're doing, we can become as light as a feather. In life, and in our work. The hummingbird can reach high speed at its takeoff. It can also stop immediately in flight from a high speed. It is such a skillful flyer that it is not afraid of any predator. Hummingbirds have been known to chase off eagles. No other bird can fly backwards. This reflects the hummingbird's ability to explore the past and to draw from it the nectars of joy. The hummingbird can help you to find joy and sweetness in any situation. Its swiftness is always a reminder to grab joy while you can and as quickly as you can. Because of its iridescent colors, the hummingbird has been named for jewels and glittering stones. The ruby-throated hummingbird, for example. It has also come to be associated with the fairy realm. One species has been called the wood nymph hummingbird and another the purple crowned fairy. The iridescent colors have also caused it to be associated with rain. More specifically, it is associated often with the rainbow of promise that follows the rain. To Pueblo Indians, the hummingbird's rainbow coloring, its great strength in flying, and its hovering around flowers has associated with various ritual practices. Prayer sticks and ceremonies were used to bring the rain and to help with endurance. Hummingbirds are big eaters, and most of their food is comprised of the nectars or sugars in flowers, although they will also eat tiny insects. The hummingbird may eat 50 to 60 meals a day. Because of its small size and its high degree of activity, it loses body heat quickly, so it must digest food quickly. Individuals with hummingbird totems should watch their own sugar levels. 
Are you getting too much or too little sugar? Are you hypoglycemic or hyperglycemic? Are you not getting enough sweetness in your life? Are you not savoring the sweet things in your life? Hummingbirds are very playful. Even when bathing, they bathe often. They play in the water like they did with me. They also seem to fight with each other, although no one seems to get hurt. Now, scientists pretty much agree that these are only mock fights to exercise and for fun. Hummingbirds are fiercely independent, except when mating, they like to be alone and free, seeming to revel in that freedom. During the mating ritual, the male does anything he can to gain the attention and affection of the female. If the female chooses to mate, she returns the attention. Otherwise, she just flies off. Mother hummingbirds are hard workers. This is necessary, for they receive no help from their mate. She will usually lay two eggs. Again, very symbolic. Two is the number of our inner self, the feminine to which we must give birth and express to find our own joy. Hummingbirds are master architects. They build their homes with great care and design. Some are very intricate, but each is unique into itself. If the hummingbird has taken up residence in you or with you, you may wish to redecorate. It may be telling you to do something to create joy in your home. Hummingbirds can also hibernate overnight. The body temperature will lower, its feathers will ruffle up as insulation, and it will assume a state of torpidity. It will appear to have died on its perch. This is done to prevent exhausting the energy supplies necessary for it to live while allowing it to rest. For those with the hummingbird as totem, it is important to get regular and deep sleep and rest. It will be necessary so that you do not burn yourself out. The ruby-throated hummingbird is a wonder of migration. Every winter it makes an amazing journey. For several days it will eat and eat and eat, storing up food and energy in its tiny body. Then it will fly for days and days to get to a warm climate. Some have been known to make a journey of 2,500 miles or more from Alaska to Central America. Scientists still are unsure how it is able to store up enough energy to accomplish such a journey. But what science doesn't understand, nature does. So the hummingbird can travel and travel incredibly long distance. And because of it, the hummingbird is a symbol for accomplishing that which seems impossible. It will teach you how to find the miracle of joyful living from your own existence. So as you can see, I had the opportunity to receive some of my own personal growth and learning through nature this week. The hummingbird flew into my life and reminded me that providing myself with joy and allowing myself to take the time to experience joy along with the work and the stresses that sometimes go along with it are so vital and important. The hummingbird teaches us lots of things and for me, it taught me to remind myself about joy, independence, and getting enough rest. <laughs> so what does nature have to teach you? We can learn a lot through observing nature. To join us on an immersive experience in nature, you are able to click the description box and see more about joining us for the Cades Cove Tour here in East Tennessee. We'll also show you a little bit of video about that. We encourage you to join us for an immersive nature experience. We've had such a joy experiencing that with the people who've come to join us on other tours, and we will show you a little bit more about those immersive nature experiences next week. So for now, I send you off into nature and life, always with love. From Angelique. What animals and insects are you observing? If you'd like to learn more about what those signs from nature can teach you, order Ted Andrews' book, Animals Speak, by clicking the link in the description box today. Get ready to feel revitalized and refreshed by a day hike. 
a waterfall, and a five-star supper in the heart of the Smoky Mountains of East Tennessee. Join author, speaker, and nature enthusiast Angelique Meadow as she leads Will You Love Nature Tours every third Tuesday of the month through October 2022. Feel the cool mountain breeze and the crystal clear stream. Smell the seasonal flowers and forest. Hear the rushing waterfall and watch animals in their element. Whether you're beginning to connect with yourself, nature, and life in this way, or you'd like to deepen your connection, join us to renew your heart and mind with Angelique in Nature. Learn easy tips for more peace, joy, and vibrancy. Release inner resistance and feel refreshed today. After the hike, we'll enjoy a relaxed supper on the patio of the Dancing Bear Bistro. And if you'd like to extend your experience overnight, book your own luxury cabin at Dancing Bear. These exclusive Will You Love Nature tours and dinners in the heart of the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee are now open. Book your tour now, any third Tuesday of the month through October 2022. Just click the description box, click the link for the Cades Cove tour, then book your tour, and we'll see you there. For more information about programs offered by Will You, Mentoring with Angelique, and to watch video success stories from clients, explore willyougrow.com. If you or your company are interested in inspiring our mutual audience by sponsoring this or another of our programs, let's talk about it. Boost viewer confidence and trust in your company. Call 1-833-WILL-YOU, then press extension number 6. Make sure to click the subscribe button to get reminders before upcoming shows.